Hello, dear students. Welcome to Mark Darshan series. So, in this today's video, we basically talk about polymerized chain reaction. So, this is a one of the important techniques in biotechnology field. So, this techniques is basically uh, this is a laboratory technique for the generation of large quantities of specified DNA. This technique is basically for the generation of large quantity of specified DNA. So this PCR, this is a cell-free amplification technique. So this amplification, you know, the DNA amplification process, this basically takes place inside a cell. So this basically takes place inside a cell. But in PCR, this is basically amplified this without uh, use of a cell or no need of cell is required for the amplification. So amplification is basically carried out inside a machine. Synthesize multiple identical copies. So in this technique, so what basically occurs? So there is a formation of multiple suppose this is a DNA. Okay, so by this technique, so we want to produce a multiple copies or this is a mRNA we want to produce a multiple copy. So exact same RNA or same DNA will be formed in billions of any DNA of interest or any RNA of interest. So these techniques initially developed by Carrie Mullis, a uh, scientist. For that, they get uh, in 1983, they, uh, in this technique was uh, developed by 1983 by Carrie Mullis. For that, they get a Nobel Prize at 1993. So you have to remember who I discovered uh, uh, PCR technique and uh, a third year they he, uh, get a Nobel Prize. So remember in 1993 they get Nobel Prize. So in 18, uh, 1983 they initially discovered PCR techniques. So they basically this technique basically involves this is a double stranded DNA of interest denatured into separate into two identical strands. Each strand then allowed to hybridize with the primers and the primer template duplex is used for the DNA synthesis by the enzyme DNA polymerase. So let's see what this process basically takes place. First of all, let me explain. This is a, sorry. Let's suppose this is a DNA. Okay. So initial stage is, so initial step is denaturation. So during denaturation, these two strands get separated. Okay. Now next step is now binding of primers. So now next step is brine binding of primers. So this step is called as annealing. Now this primer is moved in this one is from this direction, another will be this direction. So by during the movement of the uh, uh, movement of this primer, so two new DNA will be formed. This is one DNA. Okay, from one DNA, uh, two copies are formed. Similarly, from two to four, four to sixteen. So, like that way, the uh, synthesis of DNA strand basically takes place. So, this is so. I hope you understand what I am trying to say. So, initial step is DNA strand is basically denatured. From the denatured strand, one will be uh, so. This from after denaturation, the primer will attach. Then the primer will start grow or the synthesized of uh, complementary nucleotide bases. So that will lead to formation of a new DNA strand. This is the basic principle involved in DNA uh, uh, PCR techniques. So PCR techniques are basically having three steps. One is denaturation. As I told you, this step when two strands basically separated. Next one is annealing. So annealing when primers are joined, that is called as annealing. Then the synthesis of new strand, this step is called as, this step is called as, Synthesis. This step is called as synthesis. Okay. So next is 
what are the essential uh, component that is basically required in uh, PCR technique? What are the essential component that basically required in PCR technique? So first thing is thermostable DNA polymerase. So DNA polymerase role is the formation of nucleotide starch. So next, the point is thermostable. So thermostable means heat stable. So they can uh, resistance the heat up to 95 degree. Why so? Because remember when the initial uh, when I was I will tell you what are the temperature range. So at denaturation, so temperature will be around 92 to 95 degree centigrade. So it will be around 92 to 95 degree centigrade. So for that purposes, this particular DNA polymerase has to be withstand this temperature to show their mechanism of action. That's why a thermostable thermostable means heat stable that can resistance resistance heat for up to heat 95 degree centigrade primer so primer one primer is forward primer and one is reverse primer so forward primer will be moved in this direction forward direction and reverse primer will be moved in reverse direction next is dntp you know dntp is at the nucleotide bases are present between two standards so like for that we need dntp DGTP, DCTP, and DTTP. Next is divalent cation ion. That is magnesium ion is a cofactor for the DNA polymerase. So, so DNA polymerase, we are talking about stack DNA polymerase. So I will tell you what is stack DNA polymerase. For, for their, uh, we can say, optimum activity. So you know, for, for enzymes, so we, uh, for optimum activity, cofactor is there. Cofactor will increase the activity of the enzyme. For that purposes, magnesium ion will be added. Next is buffer provided for the chemical environment for the activity of DNA polymerase, next template DNA or cDNA. So from this cDNA, the copies will be uh, uh, formed. Okay. So PCR basically, as I told you, the PCR techniques having three major steps. One is denaturation, another one is uh, aniline or denaturation, and final one is synthesis. So first one is denaturation. So denaturation basically is what is the meaning of denaturation as I discussed in this slide. So denaturation means from this uh, from this uh, intact DNA to uh, DNA stands basically uh, separate from each other. So denaturation step basically carried out uh, at 95 degrees centigrade. This temperature you have to remember this this was asked in GPAT exam, okay? So the temperature you have to remember. So on the temperature around 95 degree for about one minute, the DNA gets denaturated and the two stand basically get separated. So this question was asked in GPAT 2020. So during denaturation cycle, the PCR temperature is rise to at what degree? So this is the correct answer is option A, 90 to 90. As I told you, it is around 95 degree. So 95 degree, so that's why this with this range will be the correct answer 90 to 98 degree okay next is after denaturation the next step is renaturation or aniline so aniline means the primer will be binds to the separated dna stand so do two separated dna stand form now the primer will specifically binds to the uh, newly uh, the separated stand so in this step the primer the or pairing of the complementary region of targeted dna the temperature should be lower here the temperature should be lower. It is around 50 to 70 degree. The annealing temperature is typically below 5 degree of their TM primer. TM means melting temperature. Okay, so it should be 5 degree less than the melting temperature uh, TM of the primer. Next is after denaturation. Uh, after denaturation, next step is annealing. So at, at the annealing step, the primer is going to bind to the uh, the uh, separated stand. So after that. Again, we have to reach, raise the temperature to a certain level for the, uh, for we can say, uh, for the synthesis, uh, synthesis of their complementary stands. So the initiation of DNA synthesis occurs at a pre-prime hydroxyl end of each primer. So this basically they are carried out at pre-prime hydroxyl end of each primer. The primers then extended by, now this primer will start extending. This primer are extended by joining of the complementary base to a DNA stand. Okay. The synthesis process in PCR quite compar uh, comparable to the DNA replication of the leading stand. Here, the tag DNA polymerase, so tag DNA polymerase, the optimum temperature around 75 degree. So it basically used. So for the, as you know, for the synthesis, we need DNA polymerase. For the synthesis step, 
we need the enzyme DNA polymerase. But the normal DNA polymerase is not thermostable, so it cannot uh, uh, resist the temperature of 95 degree. For that, a specific DNA polymerase, which we call it as a TAC DNA polymerase. What we call it, we basically call it as a TAC DNA polymerase. So this TAC DNA polymerase, what do? This TAC DNA polymerase can resist the temperature up to 95 degree. So this TAC DNA polymerase basically uh, isolated form of a specific species uh, i will tell you in the latter uh, uh, in the upcoming slide so for her meanwhile just remember for this annealing or primary extension or dna synthesis step the track dna polymerase is required and that temperature will be around uh, around uh, 75 degrees the optimum temperature and it can resist the temperature up to 95 degrees centigrade it can resist that's this much of temperature. Next is C. This is a typical graphical representation of the temperature changes that basically carried out in during PCR technique. So this is a temperature change, uh, change carried out in PCR technique. Sorry. So this denaturation steps takes basically one minute and the temperature will be around 95 degrees centigrade. So this 95 degree temperature, the DNA, the DNA stand started. So if this will be a uh, original DNA stand. So from that, two, uh, two separate stands get separated. Now this renaturation step, so in the renaturation step, now primer will be start binding. So this will be around 65 to 70 degrees centigrade. Okay, 62 to 63 degrees centigrade. So this renaturation, now this primer will be binds to the complementary part of this DNA. So after that renaturation, so renaturation basically takes place two minutes or this is also known as uh, primer ex extension step. So this is also known as extension extension step okay where the re again synthesis of a uh, new strand uh, from uh, from this primers okay so this is a typical so for the denaturation the time required one minute for the renaturation time required one minute for the dna synthesis time required two minutes you have to remember both the uh, temperature and time for the uh, exam purposes next is source of dna polymerase as i told you this dna polymerase which is basically uh, uh, which is basically used in this uh, 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 PCR technique is our TAC DNA polymerase. So the, the DNA name, the enzyme name is TAC DNA polymerase. So in the original PCR technique, when the uh, PCR technique was initially developed by Carimulis, so they basically use neon fragment. So initially they basically use neon fragments of E. coli, neon fragment of E. coli DNA polymerase was used. This enzyme get denatured. So major problem associated with this uh, enzyme was this get denaturated, uh, denaturated at higher temperature. At high temperature, this DNA get denaturated. Therefore, fresh enzyme has to be added in each cycle. So at each cycle, we have to add it. Uh, we have to add a fresh enzyme for the next. Uh, 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 next cycle. So to avoid this process, so the breakthrough was by lawyer in 1989. So they introduced the concept of TAC DNA polymerase. So this the uh, we can say the the change of era was started when the there is an introduction of TAC DNA polymerase. So TAC DNA polymerase this is basically heat resistance. This can be resistant the temperature up to 95 degree. Hence it is not necessary to add this enzyme press enzyme at each cycle PCR cycle. Next is the DNA polymerase obtained from the species Thormus aquaticus. This is very, very important. The species name you have to remember. Thormus aquaticus species. So Thormus aquat from this Thormus aquaticus. So this uh, DNA polymerase basically isolated. This is can stable up to 94 to 95 degrees centigrade. Optimum temperature basically is seen at 70 to 80 degrees. So exact if you ask, so exact temperature is around 75 degrees. So at 75, so optimum temperature. 
it has an extension rate of 30 to 100 nucleotides uh, per second at 72 degrees centigrade. So at the temperature 72 degrees centigrade, it, uh, it will add 35 to 100 nucleotides to the newly synthesized strand. Okay, so next is, so you have to give the, this question was asked in GPAD 2004. So the question was, thermos aqua, uh, the DNA amplification by PCR technique uses thermos aquaticus DNA polymerase, DNA topoisomerase, DNA poly, RNA polymerase, or RNA, poly, uh, RNA helicase. As, you, as I discussed in the previous slide, so this, uh, uh, for the synthesis of uh, complementary stands, so we need the thermos aquaticus DNA polymerase, or shortly we known as TAC DNA polymerase. Next, this question was asked in GPAD 2015. Okay, which of the following enzyme is isolated from thermos aquaticus? Just now I have discussed. So, which enzyme basically isolated your options are for TAC polymerase, TAC ligase, TAC kinase, TAC nuclease? Here, the right answer will be TAC polymerase. Okay, the right answer will be TAC polymerase. Next, after each cycle of PCR, the template doubles. So, basically, uh, at one cycle, from one, as I told you, from one DNA, we get two, from two to four. So the major formula that is used is two to the power n. Okay, so two to the power n, uh, so two to the power, uh, sorry, not two to the power n. So basically this uh, from one to two, two to four. So like that, the synthesis of DNA strand basically Awkward. So after each cycle of the PCR templates, the stand basically doubles. If one starts, uh, if one start with a single double standard DNA molecule, after 20 cycle, the number of the molecule is 1 into 10 to the power 1 into 10 to the power 6 DNA can be produced. So this can be calculated by a simple formula NF is equal to NI into 2N. So where NF is equal to final number of DNA molecule produced by PCR, NI is equal to initial number of molecule used in PCR, N is equal to number of cycle performed. How many cycles you have performed, that will give you the final number of DNA can be that can be produced from the PCR techniques. Okay, so this is very simple and very high efficacy technique. So this basically, you know, during COVID time, how this technique is is uh, frequently used for the diagnosis of COVID COVID uh, COVID nineteen. So you can see how powerful technique this is. Next is how this basically polymerization uh, reaction takes place. So first, basically the denaturation step. So during denaturation, the two strand basically separated from each other. So you can see these two strand basically separated from each other. So after that, this primer, this is basically primer. So one is your forward primer, FP, another one is your RP. Okay, two type of primer basically used. One is forward primer, FP, which is move in forward direction. Another one is reverse primer, which is moving in reverse direction. Okay, so this is basically after that, your movement is basically start. This is a reverse primer and this is a forward primer. So by this movement, so there is a synthesis of a new start. So from one DNA, we basically, we are basically two. From the similarly from the two, two to four, similarly four to sixteen, like that, your DNA synthesis basically takes place. So this basically a series of reaction. Okay. This is basically a series of reaction during which there is a synthesis of uh, multiple copies of DNA from a single DNA molecule. Okay, next is, next is what are the other varieties of PCR? So we are basically, uh, we discussed about normal PCR. What are the other variety of PCR that can be used? One is nested PCR. Nested PCR increase the specific of DNA amplification. In nested PCR, there is the increase the specification of uh, specificity of a DNA application by reducing the non-amplification of DNA. Next is inverse PCR. Another one is anchored PCR. Next is reverse transcription PCR, asymmetric PCR, real-time PCR. Uh, uh, random amplified polymeric DNA PCR, uh, polymeric uh, polymorphic DNA, which is called as RAPD. Next is amplification fragment length polymerase LP, LPF and rapid amplification of cDNA ends. So this reverse transcriptase PCR was 
very commonly used for the diagnosis of COVID-19 during COVID cases. Diagnosis of COVID-19. So this was basically used for the diagnosis of COVID-19. Next is how this process basically uh, used during the era of COVID-19. So during the COVID-19, how this uh, PCR techniques was used for the identification of uh, or detection of this COVID-19. So you know whenever you go for uh, or when what at the time of COVID when you uh, uh, so if any one of you have gone through COVID-19 test, so they basically uh, insert a, a swab into your nose so to take the sample so by this using this swab so they initially take the sample okay so the, this sample basically the sample in the swab basically what present your mucus present mucus present from this mucus they extract rna from this mucus they extract rna now this I, rna is filled in a microfluidic chip input now this RNA is placed in a microfluidic chip input. Now this after that, so there is a amplification. So that RNA will be amplified, uh, amplified, and for the detection. So we basically get the value in a CT. Okay, CT value. So we might have about CT value. If a person having high CT value, see he or she is in normal, or there is no chance of project. If the CT value is lower. So it indicates that the person is COVID positive. Okay, so by this uh, by this approach, we basically uh, uh, use for the identification of uh, or diagnosis of COVID nineteen. So the you application of uh, application of PCR in clinical diagnostic. So prenatal diagnosis of inherited disease. So there are several inherited disease like uh, genetic disease, which also can be identified in the PCR technique like sickle cell anemia, uh, beta thalassemia, beta thalassemia, polyketonuria can be detected by this PCR sample. Next is diagnosis of retroviral infection. So retroviral infection like HIV can also be direct uh, can be diagnosed by the uh, PCR technique. So PCR can be form a cDNA is a valuable tool for diagnosis and monitoring of retroviral infection. So that will identify the disease condition. So for the HIV detection, these techniques basically used. Next is diagnosis of bacterial infection. <coughs> There are several bacterial infections can also be diagnosed by using PCR techniques. So this basically includes PCR technique basically used for the identification of bacterial infection like tuberculosis by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Next is diagnosis of cancer. So cancer like cervical cancer caused by HPV, human papilloma virus, can be detected by PCR. Further, some of the cancer which occurs due to chromosomal translocation. So some of the uh, by bacteria, some of the oh, we can say some of the cancer which occur due to chromosomal translocation. It is chromosomal number four and eighteen in the follicular lymphoma, involving uh, knowing the gene for the identification of in PCR. Next is PCR for the sex determination of embryo. Sex of human livestock embryo fertilized in vitro can be determined by PCR technique by using primer and DNA probe of specific for sex chromosome. It can be possible. Further, this technique also used to detect sex link disorder in fertilized embryos. So this, which is also this is a such a powerful technique that in an embryo also, if any sex linked uh, disease is there, it you can also uh, able to detect this disease. So uh, what are the other use of PCR? So other use of PCR is so this is basically used for the uh, genetic sequencing, gene sequencing or genetic so sequencing that means what is that means so if you want the exact the uh, exact the composition of a particular dna so you can also take the help from this pcr technique so used to study the evolutionary biology and it is used for the forensic medicine for the identification of clinical purposes okay For the identification of criminal purposes, this PCR technique is used. So this is basically 
all about the PCR techniques. So let me uh, summarize what we have learned in these techniques. So these techniques is basically, this is a powerful technique in biotechnology, which is basically used for the uh, generating large quantity of specific DNA. So this is basically amplification techniques and this techniques is basically a cell print amplification. That means the amplification will be carried out outside of cells. Okay, these techniques were uh, developed by Carrie Mullis scientist in 1983 and for that he got a Nobel Prize in 1993. So what the basically process, the basic principle involved is the double strand of DNA, basically uh, the double strand of DNA of interest, basically denatured. So denatured and separated into a single strand. Now from the single strand, there is a binding of primer or R. Uh, or uh, primers will be a binds to the that's denatured DNA and uh, there is two major type of primer is used one is forward primer and the another is the reverse primer forward primer move in forward direction and reverse primer in moves in reverse direction so and the after binding of the primer now the synthesis of takes place uh, complementary stand for that there is a involvement of DNA polymerase enzyme which is a specific one that is tag DNA polymerase so tag DNA polymerase having specific property that this can withstand the temperature up to 95 degree. So there are three major steps that is involved with uh, PCR technique. One is denaturation, another one is renaturation, another one is uh, synthesis. So next is uh, next is what are the components we require for a PCR to run a PCR. So first thing is a tag DNA polymerase or thermostable DNA polymerase that can resist the temperature up to 95 degree. Next is primer. Two type of primer can be used. One is power primer and second one is reverse primer. Next one is DNTP, like DATP, DTTP, DCTP, and DTTP. Next is cofactor magnesium, which is required for the uh, activity of DNA polymerase, which is uh, basically increase the enzymatic activity of DNA polymerase, that is your magnesium ion. Question can be asked which divalent ion is required for the PCI techniques? So this is magnesium, not calcium. Okay. Buffer provides a standard suitable environment for the DNA polymerase and template DNA stand or cDNA, which is also known as. Complementary DNA. CDNA is also known as complementary DNA. So at denaturation temperature, uh, denaturation, the temperature will be around 95 degree for the separation of two stand. So after denaturation, there will be there will be renaturation where temperature has to be reduced to 50 to 70 degree, where the primer has to be binds to the newly formed DNA, the DNA stand. So after that, renaturation is takes place. So for that, we have to increase the temperature to 75 degree. And for that, we need a tag DNA polymerase. So you can see if the, the denaturation basically uh, takes around one minute. Renaturation also take one minute, but the, for the synthesis of DNA stand, it will take around two minutes to again synthesize the new stand. So if we we'll talk about the source of DNA polymerase, so this stack DNA polymerase basically isolated from Thomas Aquaticus. This can uh, basically stand the temperature around 94 degree. So the um, optimum temperature will be around 75 degree. At 72 degree, it can add 70, uh, 35 to 100 nucleotide per second. So what is the uh, disadvantages of conventional DNA polymerase? The conventional, the initially when the te technique was developed, so the Carimulis used a, a neon fragment of E. coli for the amplification. But due to uh, due to high temperature, or uh, we can say due to the temperature uh, issue, the, due to thermolabile nature, this uh, uh, DNA uh, polymerase has to be added in each cycle. That was quite difficult. So for that purposes, that is the development of DNA polymerase. Okay. Next, we are talking about what are the uh, how we will calculate the uh, uh, number of final products. So we basically talked about different varieties of PCR that is nested PCR, uh, inverse PCR, anchored PCR, reverse transcriptant PCR, asymmetric PCR, real time PCR, and all We have discussed. So we also talked about how this uh, COVID uh, PCR techniques is used for the diagnosis of COVID-19 vaccine. We also talked about all application of PCR in clinical diagnosis, like for the treatment of inherited disease, uh, for the detection of inherited disease for diagnosis of retroviral infection. Next, we talk about diagnosis of bacterial infection. It is also used for diagnosis of cancer for the determination of sex of embryos. And we also use their, uh, talked about their uses. I hope everyone is clear up to this. Okay. So if you have any doubt, you put your question in the chat box or the comment section, we'll uh, able to answer your question. Okay. Next, we'll talk about lotting. 
so what is blotting so blotting this is basically analytical tool for the identification of dgl dna or rna factor this blotting is analytical tool for the identification of desirable dna or rna fragment okay it interfere as the process of immobilization it interfere with the process of immobilization of sample of nucleic acid on solid sulfur so this is a required solid sulfur is nothing but this is a membrane so this uh, there are three major type of membrane is used one is your nitrocellulose membrane one is your nitrocellulose membrane one is your nylon membrane and another in which is your pbdf membrane so the most commonly used blotting techniques are basically your southern blotting northern blotting and dot blotting so southern blotting is used for the detection of dna northern blotting is used for the detection of rna and dot blotting is used for the this can be detected by both dna and rna another important technique is there that is called western blotting so this basically used for the identification of proteins by using specific primary antibody so this year what this question was asked in GPAT 2019. So this is basically question asked in GPAT 2019. The protein basically identified by using primary antibodies. So let's talk about southern blotting. So this southern blotting is basically named by after the scientist uh, E.D. Southern in 1975 who developed it. The genomic DNA is isolated from the cell or the genomic DNA basically isolated from the cell or tissue digested with one or more restriction enzyme. This is basically digested with one or more restriction enzymes. So this mixture is basically loaded into a well. This mixture is loaded into a well of well in an agarose or polyacrylamide gel and then subjected to electrophoresis. So first you have to synthesize the agarose or polyacrylamide gel into the gel. We have to load the DNA sample and we are and we run go for electrophoresis and we go for electrophoresis. The DNA being negatively charged, so DNA basically negatively charged due to uh, which compound the phosphate ion. So due to the presence of phosphate ion. DNA basically negatively charged. So these they migrate basically towards the anode. Anode is a positively charged electrode. So smaller DNA fragments will be moves faster as comparison to higher, higher molecular weight fragment. So the separated DNA molecules again denatured by exposed to exposed to mild alkali and transferred to a nitrocellulose or nylon factors. So after the electrophoresis, it will undergo alkali hydrolysis, mild alkali treatment. For that, uh, and after, after mild alkali treatment, it will uh, move to the, it, it move into a nitrocellulose membrane. Now, this nitrocellulose or nylon paper is exposed to a labeled DNA probe. So now this, now your DNA has been transferred into a nitrocellulose or nylon membrane paper. Now it will expose to a cDNA, uh, radio labeled cDNA probes. Now this probe will hybrid, hybridize with the complementary DNA molecule of the paper. The paper or nitrocellulose membrane or the nylon membrane has got DNA sample. So now we basically expose the complementary DNA to this paper. So this exposed complementary DNA will bind to the nitrocellulose paper. So this will form a, uh, this will form a uh, complementary DNA molecule. It will complement, forms a complementary stand with the DNA molecule. Now the paper after uh, now the paper after through the washing is exposed to x ray clip to uh, develop a autoradiogram. So after this treatment, this will expose to a x ray film for the development of autoradiogram. This reveals the specific bond corresponding to the DNA fragment recognized for the cDNA probes. Okay, so let's see the graphical representation. So for initially, we have to immobilization of nucleic acid. So this is basically pre-hybridized with labeled with DNA or RNA probes, next take followed by hybridization, then uh, straight washing and followed by detection. So we we'll see how this transfer basically takes place. So, so the transfer basically takes place by following steps. Initially a support block has to be kept. So over that we have to place the gel. This is the gel. After gel we have to place the membrane. This is a nitrocellulose or nylon membrane. This is nitrocellulose or nylon membrane. So after that, again, filter paper is placed. So after filter paper, a paper tissue is placed. After paper tissue, glass plates. 
and further weight has to be applied. So by these uh, techniques of this series of reaction, so the uh, we can say the uh, transfer process basically takes place. Next is Jew blood. So Jew blood is basically used to compare the DNA sequence uh, sequence genome between human and other organisms. For example, hemoglobin gene expression in human is compared to the that chimpanzee or sand pig. This is basically takes place uh, carried out by Jew blood techniques. So application, what are the application of southern blotting? So application includes, it is an invaluable method for gene analysis, important for the confirmation of DNA cloning, forensically applied to detect the minute quantities of DNA to identify these thieves and rapists, highly useful for the determination of restriction fragment length polymerase associated with pathological conditions. Okay, these are the major use associated with uh, these are the major use that is basically associated with the uh, application of southern blotting. Okay. Next, next is uh, so this is a graphical representation genomic DNA. So undergo restriction uh, endonuclease treatment that will be formation of DNA fragment. Now this DNA fragment undergo gel electrophoresis. Long the DNA will be kept uh, live here, but the short fragment will move with the distance. Now this will undergo agarose gel electro, then you will transport to nitrogen or nitrocellular membrane by using a specific hybridization probe, we can detect the DNA sample based upon their molecular weight. Next is, uh, after southern blotting, the next technique is uh, northern blotting. So northern blotting is basically for the identification of specific RNA molecule. This is basically identification of specific RNA molecules. So RNA molecules are subjected to electrophoresis. RNA molecules are subjected to electrophoresis followed by blood transfer. Subjected to electrophoresis followed by blood transfer and hybridization and auto -rad uh, radiographs. So RNA molecule does not bind to the nitrocellular paper or nylon membrane. So this does not bind to the nitrocellulose or nylon paper. You have to remember this statement. Okay, for that blood transfer of RNA molecule, we carried out by chemically reactive prepared by Diazotization, chemically reactive paper, which is prepared by diazotization of amino benzyl benzoxymethyl to create a diazo benzoxymethyl D paper that is basically called as DBM paper. Remember DBM paper. So DBM paper basically used for the uh, for which purpose is DBM paper basically used for the northern blotting. So RNA can covalently binds to the DBM paper. Practically, it is not easily because each gene may give rise to two or more RNA transcript. Another drawback is presence of exon and introns in the RNA that will be interfere with the sample. Next is RNA extract. So, so first step is our RNA extraction from the sample from the species or from a species. We basically extract RNA. Now this RNA undergo agarose gel electrophoresis. So that will be followed by blotting, hybridization, and autoradiograph to see in the exact hybrid lobes in the sample. And last one is your dot blotting. This is also known as the nucleic acid blotting. So both DNA and RNA are directly spotted onto the filter paper, not subjected to electrophoresis. So dot blotting technique is particularly useful in obtaining the quantitative data for evaluation of gene expression. Okay. Next is Western blotting. So Western blotting involves identification of proteins. So this technique of Western blotting involves transfer of exposed proteins from the by using uh, using nitrocellular membrane by using a specific antigen. So let me discuss in detail about uh, protein. So initially, how this process basically takes place. First, you have to prepare the protein sample. First, you have to prepare the protein sample. Now, this protein sample is loaded this protein sample is loaded in nitro cellulose or, uh, or sorry this loaded in polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis gel and this undergo electrophoresis Then this undergo electrophoresis. Okay, after electrophoresis, so now we will get the gel transport. The now the gel transport into the uh, 
uh, gel now the gel contain the protein sample now this uh, go transfer into pbdf membrane pbdf membrane so gel is basically transported into pbdf membrane or pbdf membrane so this gel basically transported into pbdf membrane now this pbdf membrane are having all the protein so next what we have to do is next step is blocking with bsa blocking with bsa that is bovine serum albumin so why this blocking step is important so blocking step is important for the avoiding of non specific binding so this basically important for avoiding non specific binding for avoiding non specific binding so after blocking step now you will have to uh, go for treatment with primary antibody so you, you will go for treatment with primary antibody so now this membrane is treated with primary antibody again followed by washing step so this washing step will be required for the on on specific binding of primary by antibody after primary washing now we will you will bind the second add secondary antibody now we will bind uh, treatment with secondary antibody now this secondary antibody basically comp basically complementary to the primary antibody that will basically binds to the primary anti antibody and produce a fluorescence so now this will be produce a fluorescence which can be detected on a x-ray film okay this is a typical uh, steps of how this uh, western blotting process basically takes place so i hope everyone is clear up to uh, this so let me uh, uh, summarize what we have learned in blotting Okay, so nucleic acid blotting, this is a blotting is a technique quite analytical tool for the identification of DNA, RNA or protein. So this nucleic acid blotting is specific for DNA, RNA. So there are three major dot, uh, commonly used blotting techniques are there. One is southern blotting, another one is northern blotting and another one is, third one is dot blotting. Southern blotting for DNA, northern blotting for RNA, in dot blotting both DNA and RNA can be determined. So western blotting is another technique which basically use protein plots uh, which is used for the identification of specific proteins by uh, applying primary antibodies. Okay, so if we we'll talk about southern blotting, so southern blotting is, uh, is first time discovered by uh, scientist E.D. Southern in 1975 who developed it. The genomic DNA basically isolated from the cell or tissue that is undergo digested with one or more restriction enzyme. First, we get the tissue from the tissue, we get DNA. So this will undergo restriction enzyme for the digestion. So for specific part of the DNA is obtained. Now the specific part of the DNA will be loaded in the electrophoresis. It will undergo electrophoresis by loading into the gel, polyacrylamide gel, which will move the as the DNA is negatively charged, this will move to the positive, uh, positive uh, electrode, that is the cathode, so that the movement basically uh, based upon the molecular size weight of the gel, uh, size, size of the uh, DNA molecule, high molecular weight will be moves on the, uh, moves slower as comparison to the low molecular weight compound. Now this will leads to, after the uh, electrophoresis, the gel will undergo mild alkali treatment. So this mild alkali treatment will be helpful for the proper, uh, uh, after mild alkali treatment, it will go undergo transfer into nitrocellular and nylon membrane. Now this nitrocellular, after the transfer of nitrocellular and nylon membrane is exposed to the cDNA. So cDNA will complementary binds to the complementary DNA present in the membrane. So after that, that is a formation of a collar that can be de detected by X-ray film or by using autoradiograph. Okay. So next uh, step is basically, uh, next step is a Jew blood. So Jew blood is for the comparison between human and animal uh, animal DNA data. So this uh, southern blotting basically used for the uh, invaluable method for gene analysis, important for confirmation of DNA cloning, uh, forensic, forensic purposes, highly useful for the de determination of uh, restricted fragment length of polymer polymer region. Okay, next is uh, northern blotting. Northern blotting is also known as, this is a technique for the identification of RNA molecules. 
So these RNA molecules are subjected to electrophoresis to, and followed by blood transport and autoradiograph. This is we use specific paper which is known as PPM paper that is diazobenzyl oxymethyl paper. So this RNA can be covalently binds to the DBM paper. Next, what happens? So this RNA, so how this process takes place from a species, the RNA sample is obtained. Now the RNA sample, uh, the extracted RNA sample is loaded on a agarose gel, agarose gel followed by electrophoresis to uh, form a RNA uh, to form uh, to and run that will lead to uh, and followed by blotting, hybridization, autoradiography to form a specific sample. Next is uh, dot blotting or uh, western blotting, uh, dot blotting. This is dot blotting is basically for the both, both uh, DNA and RNA probes. So directly spotted on the filter paper. This is not subject to, and, uh, and not subjected to electrophoresis. So dot blotting technique basically particularly used for the cloning of quantitative data for the evaluation of gene expression. Okay, next one is Western blotting. So Western blotting is the one of the important techniques for the identification of protein. So this protein is basically specifically treated with a primary antibody. So after primary antibody treatment, the, we can check the expression of this protein antibody. So as I discussed, uh, as I uh, discussed about the detailed procedure of Western blotting, let me revise these things once again. So initially we have to prepare the protein sample. This protein sample is, uh, protein sample basically uh, loaded into a polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. So this poly after loading into a polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, now this undergo electrophoresis to obtain. Now this our sample is present in the gel. Now this gel is uh, followed, uh, followed by transfer process. So transfer basically takes place by adding transfer buffer in a transfer tank. So the now this the protein from the gel is transferred to a PBDF membrane. Now this PBDF membrane is previously activated. Now the previous PBDF, uh, the, for the activation of PBDF membrane, we have to place this PBDF membrane in methanol solution. So methanol will uh, activate the PBDF membrane. So after PBDF membrane activation, there will be a uh, transfer of this uh, gel to a P, uh, PBDF membrane. So this PBDF membrane undergo blocking with BSA, mobile serum albumin. This mobile serum albumin will block the unnecessary uh, uh, spaces present in the uh, present in this. Uh, membrane. Now this membrane is under after uh, blocking step. We we have to give the washing. So after washing step, we treat with primary antibody. So after primary antibody treatment, further we have to give the uh, uh, further we have to give a uh, uh, washing. So after that, there will give a secondary antibody. So that secondary antibody will give a fluorescence assay. If I show the uh, show the graphical repre or uh, diagrammatic representation, this will be looks like for suppose this is a membrane. So membrane content for suppose this is a proteins present in the membrane. Now the primary antibody will bind to the specific primary antibody will bind to the specific protein. Okay, though sometimes there is a chance that it can also bind to the on specific area. For that, you have to give a washing step. So washing step will remove the on specific binding. So washing step, what will cause? This will remember, remove the on specific bind. Okay, so after uh, on specific binding, so that will, uh, next we have to add the, uh, next what we have, we have to add the second, this is primary antibody. This is primary antibody. So after primary antibody, we also have to secondary antibody. So this secondary antibody having a fluorescence level compound. So after binding a primary with secondary antibody, there will be a formation of fluorescence, which can be detected on X-ray field. Okay, so this is all about the uh, all about the uh, Western blood technique. So that is uh, that's all about your uh, blotting, and uh, we have divide, we discussed two topics today. So first one is about uh, one is PCR. 
and second one is blotting so pcr is amplification technique where dna or rna sample sample get amplified to produce more number of copy and blotting is a, a detection technique so different blotting is used for the different detection of you have to remember which blotting technique is used for the detection of what compound so that will be that can be asked question in the exam okay so that's all for today thank you if you have any queries you can put in the chat box or uh, put it in the comment we will uh, able to answer your questions thank you